I like to say that we as Java backend developers have been spoiled, okay? Especially if you're working on something like Spring Boot or Spring MVC, we are definitely spoiled, my friends. We've never had to think about concurrency, right? We have Spring MVC, which handles it for us, right? Think about it. When was the last time you had to think about concurrency issues because multiple users could be hitting the same API endpoint? We don't think about that, right? So when you code for a, a controller, right? You're writing a single controller method. You have a certain mindset that you don't even think you're, you're using, right? You, you assume that you're just handling a single request, right? You don't think that the same code that you're writing in your controller could be handling a hundred requests at the same time. Do you think about it? No, you just have this paradigm that you think, okay, this is just one request I'm going to get as input to my method. I'm going to handle it and I'm going to return back, right? You don't think about the multitude of requests that you're gonna handle at the same time, right? Simultaneous users are abstracted out. You don't think about that, right? Delays are abstracted out. It's like, okay, let it take how much ever time it takes. I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm gonna do things sequential. And we can in a way afford to do this because we usually do stateless methods, right? A method, it doesn't have a lot of side effects beyond affecting the database. You don't change, you know, in memory variables, you don't create like a member variable in your controller and modify that. Because when you do that, you're gonna run into all these threading issues because you can, ha you can have two requests trying to work on the same piece of data. But with these kind of pure functions that we typically tend to do with string, I shouldn't call them pure functions because they do go and update the database and things like that, read from the database and things like that. But you basically have this abstracted out because you get the inputs, everything you need, as in, you know, as arguments to your method, your Spring MVC method, and then you do your work and then you're gonna return, right? You abstract out all these things. You don't think about all these things. So the cost is we pay with sequential blocking operations and we pay with idling threads, all right? There's a problem. So let's say we wanna minimize this. We wanna have things in parallel. How do we do it? This is reactive programming. The only way? But no, hang on. We have concurrency APIs in Java, don't we? We've been having that for so long. Why do blocking when you have concurrency APIs? Okay, why block? Why have these two things? Well, imagine what it would look like to, to use these concurrency APIs in your Spring MVC application, all right? You have, I'm gonna give you a couple of examples. You have something called future. You have something called completable future, okay? So there is a way in which you can take a long blocking operation and convert it to do async in Java, okay? So here's what the example looks like, right? You have a completable future, which is an object that you're gonna get, which is returned by this supply async method, all right? So you have a supply async method, which takes in a long running process, right? Here is a lambda which is doing this user service get user, the user ID, which is what you did earlier. But now what you're doing is you're putting this into this Lambda and then you're using, you're passing that to the supply async method, right? So you do completable future dot supply async. And what you're gonna get back is an async object, right? This is not blocking. You're gonna get back something which represents a future completion of this function, right? So like, okay, whenever this completes, this object is gonna tell you, all right? That's what completable future is. So you have completable future as a, an API that's been available for a long, long time, okay? It's been available since Java 8, right? What it does is it implements something called the future interface and then it goes beyond it. I have never been a fan of future because I found it to be too limiting. If you've used future, you will kind of understand this. If you haven't used future at all, don't worry about it. Not important for this class. I just want to draw a contrast here. So it, it has a bunch more things in addition to future. And then it uses something called completion stage, which allows you to coordinate all these async operations. You can, you can almost think of it as a stage where multiple async operations happen, and then you kind of coordinate and say, okay, after this happens, then do this and do, do this and so on. So this is possible. Now, how does it look like to use something like this in a Java controller, right? So using completable feature, what do you do is you call user service as an async operation. You call the user profile service as another async operation. They happen in parallel, right? And when they both return, you're gonna merge those two data structures, and then you're gonna return that merged object from your controller. 
all right? Yes, you're going to chain the futures and combine the result of the two futures. I'm going to show you the code. Again, not important for reactive programming, all right? I'm going to show you how it would look using this, and then I'm going to show you the reactive programming way, which is so much easier, right? I want you to be freaked out by how ridiculous this code is, and then I'll show you the elegant way. Beyond that, don't worry too much. If you don't know about completable futures or futures, don't worry about it. All right, so here's how it looks. So you have a, a completable future, which is for the supply async of this guy, which is the first method execution, all right? And I have another completable future, which is from the second one, which is, which is this guy, right? Get preferences. I'm going to call that. Get another completable future, which is another async operation. And then I'm going to do a new future, which is basically a combination of these two, right? I'm going to do completable future dot all off. I want all of these things, both of these, to complete. Okay, so get from this, get from this, and now I have a future which is which represents both. And then finally, I'm going to say both futures dot join. I want both of them to complete, and then I'm going to return that thing. What I what I have is a, a success of both this operation run async and this operation run async, right? It's a, it's like basically saying, hey, go do this thing. Don't bother me. Tell me when it's ready, right? And this is the object which is going to tell you when it's ready. And this one's like, hey, go do this thing. Don't bother me now. Tell me when it's ready. This is going to say, okay, whenever that thing is ready. And now you're going to say, wait for both of these things to be ready. And when both are ready, tell me when it's ready, all right? And now here you do a futures.join. Futures.join is basically like, okay, I'm going to block until both of them are ready, all right? So join is from completable future. Like, you know, it's it's kind of like get from future, but without the checked exception. So it's a little bit easier. And it's kind of one of the reasons why I hate uh, futures. It's They've made the API a little bit better. So yeah, this is one way to do it. So here's what the controller looks like. Okay. <laughs> It's it looks like a mess. I don't know about you, but I think this is this is crazy. Shouldn't be this much. Okay. Now you do all this stuff. And what have we got? We've got the ability to have both those calls run in parallel. Okay, you have the get user and the get user preferences. Both those calls run in parallel. But then what you're doing over here is a join, which is still blocking, okay? You still need to wait for both of them to return and then you return the response. Why do we need blocking here? Why do we need to block? We need to block because of this guy. Notice the return type here. This is user. What is this method returning? This method is returning an object of type user. So what you need to return here needs to be an object of type user, which means your code needs to wait to get an object of type user. You can't return a completable future over here, right? You have to return object of type user, which means you have to block, you have to get the user. The blocking is the only way you can get the user from this thing. It's like, tell me when it's ready, I'm gonna wait because I need user, right? I need to wait. So tell me when it's ready, I'm gonna block get the user, and then I return, right? This is the problem. This is the problem. Both features are giant is a problem. We're blocking, right? Now, again, we optimize a little bit because now the controller doesn't go sequentially, right? It does those two in parallel, but then it still has to wait, which means there is still a thread sitting on the server, which means more of these things come in, right? Granted, these two aren't happening in parallel, but if those two are long running, you still have blocking, you still have threads piling up, you still have this problem where you're gonna have to keep scaling even though the server is doing nothing because it's just waiting for something else, right? You just have to keep adding more servers because all they're doing is consuming threads and waiting, right? That's the problem. So in addition to all this problem, like we, we did a whole lot, right? But we didn't get the benefit of it. And we got a little bit of the benefit. There's, there's too much for the developers to do, right? There's a lot. You have to do deal with all these completable features. You have to handle, handle all these things. And the code is messy. Error handling is messy. I haven't done error handling there. We got to do that. 
which is again messy. And then in spite of all that, it is still synchronous, right? It's still synchronous after all. So what we need is a new paradigm. We need a new paradigm. And not only do we need a new paradigm, we need the framework to support it, right? You remember the problem there was the method was returning a user object, which means no matter what subcast you do, right? No matter how you call, you know, synchronize it and you know make it parallel and all that, at the end of the day, you still have to wait. By the time the method ends, you should have gotten the user object, which means you have to wait. You have to block in the method, right? Which means threads are waiting. So it's not gonna work. That's the reason why we need a new paradigm and we need a way for the framework to support it so that you are not compelled to wait inside the method for that thing to return.